Hello, my name is Lorna and I'm one of the ministers at Whitton URC with a midweek Keeping Connected video. I'm sure you've heard of the expression to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth, meaning that you're born into a privileged, wealthy family, a family that could afford silver spoons. Gold and silver have hallmarks on them, which tell you their carrot or their purity, which in turn indicates their value. Years ago, it was quite common to give a child a napkin ring, silver of course, as a christening present. All this came to mind because I was reading in Ephesians and these words, when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance that he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. The Holy Spirit is our hallmark as Christians, just as gold and silver have a hallmark which identifies them and shows their value, so do we. When it comes to metal, the purer it is, the higher its carrot, and so of course its value. It will be softer as well, and as a consequence of that, it will damage more easily. We, like gold, are purified, and as a consequence, we are softer. <laughs> but not softer as in weaker, but softer as in more vulnerable, more pliable, more pliable to God's will. So how are we purified? It happens when, through the love of Jesus and by the grace of God, we accept the forgiveness we have in Jesus and submit to his lordship, putting him at the centre of our life. Then the Holy Spirit gradually gives us the desire and the power to change, to become more like Jesus. Now, of course, the analogy is far from perfect because whilst we are softened in one sense, we are also strengthened. We are softened to Jesus, but hardened to the world. So we don't tarnish. Any trials where we have to rely totally on God also leaves us stronger and more aware of his riches of his very self, or his nature that he longs to share with us. It says uh, in 1 John, God's spirit living in us is the proof of our new life. In another version, and God has given us, us his, has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Now tomorrow, Thursday 13th of May is Ascension Day, 40 days after Easter Sunday. Just before Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his disciples to stay in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. We know what happened when they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. They were transformed into fearless witnesses who, in, in turn, transformed cultures and communities all over the world. They didn't stay in a holy huddle. They lived real lives. I read in the Tear Funk prayer diary a couple of months ago about a rural community in Nepal and they said we never thought about the community where we live. When you came and taught us that our mission must be whole life we realised that the issues of the community must also be the issues of the church. The issues not just of our community but also of the world must be the issues of the church, our issues. That's why we are supporting Christian Aid at the moment. We're stepping out with a 30 million step challenge. I must admit, I thought that we would get 100 people to walk an average of 10,000 steps a day during this month. And I'm sure many of you are because you're going on walks daily. However, I suspect that the problem is we probably haven't got enough people with mobile phones or Fitbits who can submit their steps. After nine days, we were only at 1.6 million. So at almost a third through May, we were nowhere near the third of the 30 million. <laughs> However, the main thing is that we donate to Christian Aid if we can. We also have a quiz to raise money for Christian Aid uh, this Friday evening, the 14th, 7.30. So please do join us on Zoom or telephone and details will be sent out later in the week. We are also, of course, as a church, very aware of the issues in our community, which is why tomorrow, again, Thursday the 13th, we are asking the congregation to fast and pray, to seek God's guidance as to how we can best channel our resources in order to transform our community. Now, it may be that you cannot or should not fast for a whole day, 
or even a meal, but you could uh, consider, please, participating in some way. Perhaps fasting for one particular thing tomorrow, or if you can, at least one meal. The prospect might be daunting, but remember you're not doing it for yourself or in your own strength. You're doing it for God to seek his mind, and you're doing it prayerfully in his strength. So my prayer is that as followers of Jesus, we will not tarnish, that our hallmark will remain visible in our words and actions, and that our words and actions will not tarnish through contact with the impurities of the world. And all the time we play our part, living our lives to the full, as Jesus intends us to. So I'd like to end with some words of the Apostle Paul. I pray that, the, that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless you. See you soon. Goodbye.